Uh, I'll let me see this here. Good, good, good. All right. Welcome, everyone. I've got Mike and Bethany here, uh, and we're excited because the world's changing all around you really fast. Opportunities at every corner. Uh, their specialty is assuming assumable loans. Great. But, but I want to start off by asking both of them about VA loans, because this whole change, the possible change with the settlement, um, even though it hasn't been court approved, there are challenges with doing this and the VA loan. So what's the challenge and what do you think the workaround is? All right. I'll, yeah, I'll jump on first. So a good number of our business, I'm a retired uh, Marine myself. And so obviously our network, uh, we, we work with a lot of veterans both buyers and sellers, or active duty for that matter. Um, and while the proposed settlement is just that, proposed, right? So it's not been finalized yet or approved by the judge. Um, what we, um, you know, what we don't yet know is ultimately where this is going to be, how this is going to change the industry in the long run. Um, we're not, we don't believe that it's necessarily, or what, what we know, here's what we do know. We do know that this doesn't, this proposed settlement does not, prohibit sellers from offering buyer's compensation, buyer's agent compensation. It just makes it more difficult mm -hmm. to advertise it. So effectively less transparent. Um, if mm -hmm. it does result in uh, some sellers who choose not to offer a buyer agent compensation, really what we think, you know, in our, in our market where we serve, um, we think this is most likely going to impact veterans, uh, particularly anyone who uses a VA loan. And this is because the veteran, Department of Veteran Affairs has a policy that prohibits anyone using a VA loan from paying any brokerage fees or commissions. So they are actually not allowed by law to hire a broker or hire an agent, a real estate agent, and pay that real estate agent for services. So, uh, so there is a there's a limiting factor of an entire cadre of the American population, effectively veterans and active duty service members, who if if this results in sellers reducing or eliminating or 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 ultimately deciding not to offer a buyer agent compensation, the uh, these veterans will be most impacted by that by that change because by law they're prohibited from hiring their own agents or paying for their own agents. Got and it. so we think that could result in, in some circumstances, it could result in these, these military service members being forced to buy a home while being unrepresented. That is a possibility. Which would suck. Let's see how this goes, man. Thank you. Thank you for that. All right. So let's talk about assumable loans and how we can use them to get new leads or to attract them and to re-engage some of the old ones that we've sidelined. Uh, I'm excited about that. Let's do that. And we're going to tailor, uh, especially this first part, whether or not you're an Assume List member, these conversations are relevant to you and relevant to your potential buyers that might be in that position. So, and we'll talk a little bit about scripts you can use and, and why it's important to kind of have this as a resource or a tool in your toolkit. So, um, I was actually talking with a lender partner this morning, and we were discussing the psychology of buyers today. Mm -hmm. And I'd love to hear if you're seeing this too in the chat, but it seems like many buyers today feel like they'll never be able to afford a home at the current interest rates. Um, yeah. And that's not always based on them even getting a pre-approval. A lot of times that's just he them hearing what's on the news about rates and about prices increasing. And as a result, having kind of a mental block around buying because it seems insurmountable. And mm. as agents, one of our jobs is to help people problem solve around their home buying goals. And to do that, we need them to first open the door, the mental door to the idea that they could be homeowners. Um, so for buyers like these, that they're either, they were looking when rates were low and now they've gotten discouraged and they've stopped, or they just never got into the market. Uh, and now they're anxious or scared. Assumable loans, are that foot in the door. Um, they're a way to start having conversations around home ownership potentially being more affordable than they thought, um, about what home ownership can do for your lifetime net worth if you're a homeowner versus a renter. And they're an opportunity to further that relationship of trust between you and the buyer because you're bringing them an option to the table, assumable loans that they might never have considered before. Mm, you know, 
this almost is the perfect thing for the new world that we're heading into. It's kind of great. <laughs> like, it, yeah, it'll probably be more valuable even valuable. now that we're headed into this uncertainty. Yeah, I love this. Cool. All right, show me what you got. So um, a couple just kind of scripts. So again, even if you're not an Assumless member, we encourage you guys all to have Assumable Loans as a tool in your agent toolkit in order to have more buyer conversations. More conversations leads to more deals in the long run. So, and the reality is, and we've seen this in our own business several times already, yes, Assumable Loans will be the perfect fit for some buyers and not for others, but for those where it doesn't end up making sense, they very often will turn into traditional buyers in the near term instead. So if you can use assumable loans to start the conversation and get the ball rolling on things like getting pre-approved, talking about their timeline, um, those buyers often get past that mental hurdle that they had and they realize it really is possible for them to buy even at the current interest rates. Uh, we've got a couple buyers that came to us this year. They were looking for an assumable loan and we explored that option with them um, and we had the expertise and were able to build a relationship. But once we got them pre-approved, we they realized that even a regular purchase could make sense for them if they found the right home. And, and granted, they might not have bought as, as expensive as a home as they could get with an assumable purchase, but they still turned into a buyer client. So uh, let's talk about scripts you can use to get these buyers re-engaged if they're concerned about rates. Um, if you're just calling your database and the client says, hey, the, the rates are too high, um, the conversation is, well, what if we could still get you a home with a 3 or 4% interest rate? And if that client has never heard about assumable loans before, this is your opportunity to be a market expert and explain how they work and how they could mm. specifically help that individual. Again, continuing to build on that relationship tr trust and then offering them an option they might never have considered before. Um, if you're emailing or texting a lead and you see a listing online, either through Assume List or through your local MLS that's assumable, um, one touch point might be to send them that assumable listing via email or via text and say, hey, Joe, I just saw this place and you could actually save over $2,000 a month on the mortgage. Would you like to learn more? Um, these are all just door openers. And Michael also talked about some scripts you can use on social media, but they're there are ways to, you know, if you've got leads just sitting in your email that haven't been responding, um, these are attention getters and a way for you guys to start talking more seriously in, in ways that actually get them thinking concretely about buying again. Uh, that Well, um, hold on, Gene, we'll talk about how to get the lenses through a Zoom list, obviously, but um, I love that script because the moment you said it, I was like, oh yeah, definitely. <laughs> If you called me like that as a as a consumer, I'd be like, yeah, yeah, uh, no, oh, I thought that was dead. Right? Yeah, yeah. Right. They're they're not as well known to a lot of consumers as they are to us as agents, and so that's a valuable resource. Information is power, and in a world where we have maybe lost some of that power because there's more information available, your knowledge on how these things work sets you apart, and the opportunity that you're aware of sets you apart as an expert. That's good. I like that. I like that. So Mike, what would be some other scripts do you think we could either call with in, in our sphere or if we wanted to use it as a funnel? Because now I'm thinking of funnel because um, Bethany, you're like, we attract here and then we approve and I, they can actually qualify for other things. So that now we, we decide. And I want to know now, Maybe I'll post it up on social. Like what what would I post up? Or what would I reach out to people with the text? Yeah, there's a couple of ways to do that. Um, and and you know, Bethany gave a really great example of, of uh, reaching out to your database and talking through the idea of, of of finding a home with a sub, you know, X percent interest rate. In fact, most homes that have assumable mortgages do have a sub four percent in most cases, in many cases, sub three percent interest rate. Um, but but you can also engage sellers, right? Because a lot of sellers who would like to move or maybe um, have a interest in moving to take another job but are holding back um, because they don't want to sell their current home that maybe has a 2.75% interest rate. They're hesitant to do that because in turn, when they go buy their next house, they're going to have to take out a new mortgage at six and a half or whatever percent interest rate there is uh, at the time. And so now you can engage sellers as well and say, hey, 
I understand you may be hesitant to sell, but what if we can what if we can find you a new home that you can keep your current interest rate or have a very similar interest rate if you currently have? So you're not losing that great interest rate you have on your current home. And now there's a way you can create a double sided transaction that we found that to be successful as well. We have some some yeah, owners who would like to move, but they are not doing so because they don't want to take out that new mortgage and have a much higher interest rate, much higher mortgage payment. Hmm. So um, so what, what one way that we look to solve this problem, right, and that's really where the power of the Assume List platform uh, comes in is, is having the conversation is one thing, but then demonstrating, showing that these actually exist. These homes are truly on the market for sale and that you can, you can send these homes to potential buyers and, uh, and have that specific conversation about specific properties and, and showcase to them, here's what the mortgage payment would look like. Here's what the interest rate is. And uh, and so we built some really cool and crafty ways to do so using a Zoom list. And, and if you know if we want to demonstrate those, I can walk you through. We'll take about five ten minutes or so, yes, please. And I'll show showcase how that would work inside the platform. I would love to because here here's what I'm thinking now. Going back to Bethany because now I'm thinking like a funnel, right? I'm thinking that this is where you capture them. Do you guys remember when short sales were big and foreclosures, and the the ads would be Oh, you know, here's a list of foreclosures. Here's a list of short sales. Well, here's a list of of homes you could buy with three or four percent mortgage. That's crazy. Yeah, exactly, exactly right. So um, there are millions of buyers right now who literally want to buy a home, who are either priced out because of interest rates, or have a mental hurdle over the idea of buying a home at six and a half or seven percent when they may have, you know just a few two three years ago could have bought the same home with a two and a half or three percent interest rate so here's here's the the dashboard we're in the midst of of actually updating it right now um so we're adding in a, a section that talks about some of the new features because we're we're constantly rolling out new features and we'll talk about some of those today but in the dashboard what's really cool is the um the ability to see in each state how many homes are for sale that have an assumable mortgage remember every property on the assume list platform has it uh, that, that's listed for sale with a super mortgage has an interest rate of below 5%. So just because somebody may have taken out a VA loan or an FHA loan mm -hmm. last month or three months ago, um, we don't really care that they have a, you know, a 6.75% interest rate. It may be assumable, but that's really not useful or relevant to buyers today. What's really relevant is who has an assumable interest rate that is, you know, that is really low, below market. And, and what we kind of define internally within our business model is, sub 5% interest rates. So really those are the twos, the threes, and the kind of the low to mid fours. Um, and every single property that can be found on this website, um, in fact, most have a 3% or better. Um, and so like, for example, um, we have the data loaded up in California. We haven't uh, launched officially in California. We expect to do so this week, um, but there's approximately 1200 homes that are actively listed on the market today, at least in the areas in which we service. In California, that have a assumable mortgage below five percent. That's good crazy. Places, dude. Yep, Florida. Uh, Florida doesn't use coming soon status, but they in their active status listed for sale on the market. At least in the Central Florida corridor, there is about thirty two hundred, almost thirty three hundred homes actively listed for sale with an assumable mortgage below uh, below five percent. And so, mm -hmm. and then if you look down here below that section, that's all actively listed properties. But down below, we offer all of our, um, um, you know, all of our subscribers can see all the data for every state wow. in which we service. And so we have, you know, was it eight or nine states here or so? We're adding Arizona, Texas, uh, Colorado very soon, and then some other states beyond that. Um, you can see the total number of, 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 of properties that are searchable within our data set that have an interest rate, a mortgage with interest rate below 5%. So you can see California really just kind of blows it out of the water. There's almost a half million properties just in the state of California. And all of these are searchable, whether they're actively listed or not. That's a feature exclusive to licensed real estate agents when they subscribe. And they can, if they have a specific community or neighborhood that they're searching for for their client, and there may not be anything for sale in that, in that community, they can actually search for off-market properties. And in doing so, um, we actually give them even an additional feature where we give we provide a skip tracing tool where they can see the homeowner's cell phone number and email address, and they can reach out to them if they choose not to go door knock. We can actually 
communicate them through 21st century technology. That's crazy. Um, so let's do a quick demonstration because I really want to show you how you yeah. can use this to really generate leads. So, um, you know, when you when you hit the property search button, you're presented with kind of three tabs on top. The live MLS search tab, really just, you know, if you, if you type in a, a city, it'll sell you to show you every single property for sale in that market, um, you know, with, uh, with, you know, that's actively listed or otherwise. And you can filter based on price status. You know, if you want to look at active coming soon uh, under contract, you can look at specific home types, condos, townhouses, single families, et cetera. Of course, you can filter based on price. These are all actively listed. The one, the tab that's going to be most relevant to all of us is properties that have assumable mortgages. And so, yeah, yeah. go ahead. That, no, I'm saying yes, that's the oh, one. I yes, want. that's the one we care about. And then no. agents will have the ability to search for off-market properties. And this one here at the end, they, they can search for every single off-market property uh, on the market uh, right now. So if you wanted to see, for example, what's how many off-market homes in San Diego um, there are, there is 18,000 properties, over 18,000 properties that can Damn. be searched that are off market that have an assumable mortgage with an interest rate of below so, 5%. Mike, with, with this list that are off market, what have you found is a good approach to these? Is it, is it one approach or a multiple approach type situation where we're calling, texting, mailing, or not even texting because we don't have permission, but uh, calling if they're on the call list or mailing. What what does this look like? Yeah, I mean, I think that's really in the eye of the beholder. I think every agent has their own marketing techniques that they find that works best for them. Mm -hmm. um, so um, I think, you know, you'll find some agents uh, will call their database. Some agents will do some social media marketing and and try to incentivize their phone ringing or or, or try to you know solicit yeah. responses by even just having this conversation and being able to offer this level of service that really not many agents can provide and this is kind of a value add differentiator in many ways where most agents don't have the means to do this unless in fact i'm not aware of any other platform nationwide that offers what i just talked through which is being able, being able to search for single homes off market so Let's do this. I want to demonstrate how we can search an actively listed home that otherwise may be available for search on any other kind of platform, homes.com, Zillow, realtor.com, et cetera. Um, but remember, none of those platforms really have the means to isolate and tell you what the details are, interest rate, loan balance, down payment requirement. Um, some bits and pieces can be searched through different websites, but this really kind of makes it all uh, easy in one place. So we're just going to search my home market. We'll go Alexandria, Virginia. And let's just say we want to look at homes that are actively listed. We want to look at single family homes. And, um, you know, we, we could filter, you know, based on down payment. So if we want to, if a buyer only had, you know, $100,000 or $150,000 available for a down payment, we could certainly filter based on that criteria. And uh, let's just take, uh, you know, we could, these are the ones that fit the, the search parameters I just identified. Let's just pull a random one here and just say, Hey, this property right here, let's pull it up. Um, it's got about a three and a half percent interest rate. Um, it's a $1.2 million home. You can certainly go through the photos. Um, let's just say this was a great property that somebody wanted to uh, advertise or, or, or socialize. Um, you can uh, certainly, you know, uh, use your own listing. If you have your own listing, you could, it's automatically sync with, with the MLS. So any listing that's added into the MLS that has an assumable, mor uh, assumable mortgage will be searchable on the assume list platform. There's no additional uh, check boxes or criteria that needs to be added. In fact, only about 10% of listing agents actually include comments in their uh, in their listing. This home, uh, this listing agent did not include any comments that the home has an assumable mortgage, and yet it's still searchable on our platform. But let's just say you're an agent and you really want to uh, you you really want to uh, sell a home in, in this neighborhood. This is Fort Hunt, Alexandria, which is a really desirable single family community uh, mm -hmm. right outside of George Washington's uh, uh, home. So mm -hmm. let's just say you uh, wanted to, to advertise this, this listing or, or market this listing uh, to generate leads, to generate buyers. Yeah. So what you can do is you find a property that you like, could be your own listing, it could be anybody's listing, and you can create what's, uh, what's this button here called share, share link. And okay. we're gonna basically create a link here 
This is going to create a custom link that's unique to you. Um, um, and, and we're going to just open it up in the browser. I want people to see what this link looks like when you when you share it. So this is going to be a, a shared link that's going to be custom branded to that agent. So in this case, we're logged in as Bethany. So this link that we just created from that from our account uh, is branded to Bethany Stalder and her team name has her photo, her phone number, her email address. And what's really cool is that any lead click on contact agent and it scrolls down to this inquiry section, contact Bethany about this property. By sharing this link, anybody who fills out this contact card is immediately that contact, that lead is sent directly to Bethany. No splits, no cost, no fees. That is a free lead that was just generated uh, by Bethany doing some nifty marketing. Now she can take awesome. that link that we just talked about and she can email that out to her database. And I've talked with some agents that have 10, 15, 20,000 people in their database. Mm -hmm. However your database is, you can just create an email, say, hey, this is a really great home in this neighborhood. It has a X percent interest rate, usually gonna say something really favorable. Um, give me a call if you have any questions or if they just uh, click that button and they submit the contact, that lead will be generated or sent directly back to the agent anyway. You could also use social media. So you log into your Facebook account and you mm -hmm. just drop that link on a post and it'll immediately create the card for that link. And that link, you can share that post. Uh, interesting, it's actually supposed to show the photo. Maybe this one doesn't have a press photo. The, press the little arrows on the left. Scroll over, little arrows on the top left. Yeah, sometimes that, oh, it didn't change it. Yeah, it didn't do it. I'll find another one. I, I did a test to really work perfectly, but basically it'll show, uh, it'll show the photo it should show the photo. Let's try another one here. Um, and then you can post that link on Facebook. Anybody who sees that property might be inclined to click on it and say, hey, this is a great home. I'm looking and oh my goodness, it has a 2.5% you know, interest rate. So this property we just found roughly has a 2.5% interest rate. So that would be a way to generate a potential free lead just by sharing properties uh, on social media, for example, and you can do this on any any form. There we go. That's how it's supposed to look. So this nice. this this link, uh, this post, I can post it right now on Facebook, and I will generate. Let's kind of a quick example here. I'll just do it only to me, just to demonstrate purposes, and it'll populate on your feed, or you can share it to friends, or you can post it in anywhere, and it will become now searchable. You can add comments on the top. Anybody who clicks on that will be taken right back to your page, your custom branded page where now even the general public, folks that are outside of your database, outside your network, will see this branded link to you with your name, phone number, contact information. And again, any leads that are generated from this will be sent directly to your email account um, that you have in your Assume List profile. All right, uh, uh, three questions. Yes. <laughs> so question number one, do you find that Sometimes the, the real estate agent and the owner of the home listed have no clue that their home is assumed. So how, how do you even approach it? Because my first, yeah. if you told me and I didn't know, I'd be like, well, what is that? I don't believe you. <laughs> we, we find about half, half of all listing agents who list homes that have an assumable mortgage, half of them have no clue that their property is assumable. So... Okay. How do you explain it to them? Because sometimes some agents don't want to be explained to, you know? That's true. And I actually had that exa example uh, just last week where I had an Assume List subscriber reach out to support. Yeah. And they said, hey, um, I'm trying to, I found a property on your platform and I'm trying to place an offer. And the listing agent is telling me that the home is, doesn't have an assumable mortgage. And, and, the, and the subscriber said, I'm, I, I'm worried that maybe the data isn't correct. Mm -hmm. And I said, I said, well, hold on a second. And I was very polite about it. I'm like, I assure you the data is correct. Let me find out what's going on here. I'll get right back in touch with you. Mm -hmm. So I immediately called the listing agent. It happened to be in my home market. So I called the listing agent and I said, hey, um, I'm, I, I, I'm work I basically created a story. I'm working with a potential buyer who's interested in placing an offer on your property. I know it has a 2.75% assumable VA loan. And the listing agent says, no, uh, no, it doesn't. Our, our home doesn't have an assumable mortgage. And I said, well, are you sure? I said, if you look up the records, this home was purchased by your clients 
two years ago with a VA with a VA mortgage. Mm -hmm. um, and as you know, all VA mortgages are assumable. And so I, I had to kind of walk her through that process. And she Got says, it. oh, I didn't know it had a VA loan, she said. She yeah. says, I didn't know it was assumable. And I said, well, yes, you know, you, and you may, you know, just as a point of education, I was very polite about it. It says it may benefit you to state that in your listing because there are a lot of buyers who are really interested in this property that may, you may get more offers, you may get more um, uh, interest by including that statement in your description. Mm. So she says, oh, well, thank you for informing me. I didn't know it had an assumable mortgage. And, and again, it just goes back to that statement, uh, the point earlier about not, not all listing agents are aware the property has an assumed mortgage. In fact, yeah. even those that do, very few include the statements in their description. So I, I reached back out to that uh, assume list uh, subscriber and I said, hey, problem, you know, our you know, dilemma solved. Um, the listing agent just wasn't aware. So I educated her and she was grateful to be informed. Um, um, please let me know if you have any other properties or any, any other questions you have. And one thing that we always do is we want to make sure that anybody using the platform, whether they're a consumer or whether they're an agent, that we we help them and, 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 and guide them and answer any questions they may have, because there, there is a lot of misinformation up, out there. Um, about assumable mortgages and even a lot of listing agents don't know. And so what we don't want to happen is um, other agents who have, or representing buyers who are interested in placing offers being told no. Um, and usually that's just due to lack of knowledge um, that those listing agents have. And so there's a lot of education that is warranted within the industry um, to really showcase the power and, 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 and the, the benefits to both sellers and buyers by uh, by advertising and 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 helping buyers through uh, assumable purchases. All right, I like your answer. Second question, but before I ask the second question, um, we're getting some questions about pricing. So um, this is one of the coolest things. The pricing is very affordable. Uh, the only challenge is it may not be available in your area. So just add yourself to the wait list, which I think Bethany has put in a few times. Mm -hmm. uh, take a look at that. Uh, now, second question. By the way, everyone here should get this thing. This is this is amazing because now I texted uh, Trenton in between this. He's my director of tech. I'm like, dude, how do we miss the first time we had we talked to them? I did not realize that we can treat it like short sales foreclosure list, grab all of these amazing buyers and sellers, and filter them in, and and then just convert them. I love so that. anyway, um, that's what I, now I'm thinking that. But second question is. When you were on that property, any property, if you could showcase it back up, Mike, on your screen. Yep, yep. I'll get it up in a second. Um, because th this is going to go to what a lot of people are thinking. It's a one question I think it was earlier. So let's go to that one, that property that you had before. It doesn't matter whichever one it is. Yeah, let's pick, uh, pick one at random here. Here we go. This is a good one. Yeah. All right. So when it populates on the left, you see the interest rate, and then you see the loan amount, right? Correct. The question was... How does it work when we're representing the buyer uh, as, as far as assuming the loan and then paying the difference? Yeah, so uh, you want to cover this, Bethany? Go ahead, please. Sure. Yeah, I can. So uh, the I think the example that um, the participant gave was if the home is priced at $400,000 and the current loan balance is $300,000. So in an assumable purchase, there's no... Um, there's no recasting of the existing mortgage payment or loan balance. So you as a buyer, when you're purchasing that home, you're just taking over the exact loan balance on the day that you close and the exact monthly payment and interest rate is being now transferred into your name out of the sellers. So all that means is that in that scenario, $400,000 purchase price, $300,000 loan, the buyer needs to bring $100,000 to closing plus closing costs in order to sell or to settle. Their down payment is exactly $100,000 and then they just pay their closing costs on top of that and that's everything for cash to close. They couldn't, for example, bring $105,000 for down payment because again, no additional money can be applied towards the existing mortgage balance. You're just transferring it from the seller's name to yours. So that exact number is gonna be whatever the delta is between the sales price and the uh, loan balance. And so look at yeah. on the screen here, we have just a, again, just an example. And I apologize, these numbers are pretty high. There's just, our market is high, cost of homes are exp expensive. So this home is listed for sale, 950,000. It's a VA loan. 
it has a loan balance of right about $813,000. So anybody who wanted to purchase this home and, and assume the current interest rate, which it looks like about a 2.4, 2 this, is, this is not an exact number. This is really an estimate because there's no way to know the exact interest rate, but you know we have a little disclaimer here. It's, it's, it's almost always within plus or minus about a quarter of a percent. So I'm guessing this interest rate is either two and a quarter or two and a half in, on paper. But the, the difference, what Bethany just walked through, is how do we figure out what the down payment is? And effectively, it's just the difference between whatever the home is listed for, whatever you could buy it for, relative to what the current loan balance is. And that generates what the down payment requirement would be for a buyer to assume that mortgage. Remember, they have to assume the mortgage with its current terms, its current balance, its current interest rate. So even if a buyer wanted to add more money to reduce the loan balance, they're actually not allowed to with an assumption. They have to re they have to assume the mortgage in its current form, and in this case, of this property, the loan balance is about eight hundred thirteen thousand. So, in order to buy the home at nine fifty, that difference, that delta, is what defines that down payment. There's two ways to come up with that: either a buyer has the cash, um, which is always the easiest way. So, if they have the cash to do so, they would just cover that, and that would go to the seller at closing, and then the buyer would assume the remaining uh, the, you know, assume the VA loan. Uh, from that remaining loan balance. The other option is, uh, and this is a little bit more trickier, but some buyers have the ability to take out a second mortgage. So for example, in this case, if the buyer didn't have $137,000 cash available, um, there may be an option to take out a second mortgage um, to kind of offset or close that gap uh, that maybe uh, they have some money, but not all the money. And that would be another way to uh, to potentially assume a VA loan. And ultimately, even a second mortgage um, would have a, you know, the combined first plus second mortgage total monthly payment would uh, would be much lower than taking out a new loan. So that's still more advantageous to many buyers is even if they had to take out a second mortgage. I like that you answered that. Dude, I, I'm the more I'm thinking on this, guys, I, I don't know why wherever you're located uh, as far as uh, this product is available. I don't know why the MLSs don't have you guys built into. That would help so much, right? Yeah, help help us do that, Tristan. We're happy. Uh, when do you go live in San Diego? I know the president of the MLS there. We're hoping this week. Uh, we have one compliance review with uh, CR MLS. Uh, we're actually already approved in Bakersfield MLS. Um, we're just waiting on the CRMLS uh, to do their final compliance review. So once that's done, we should be able to go live this week. Okay. Um, then I'll just text back and forth with you. I have a call with him later today anyways. Um, what, what are your next two or three areas? That was my third question. What are your next two or three areas that are going to be released so people know? Yep, absolutely. So uh, we're very close to the Phoenix, Arizona. Uh, so ARMLS, Arizona Regional MLS, and then entire coverage area, which will include all of Scottsdale, greater, uh, you know, greater Phoenix, Maricopa County. Um, that's next, as well as we're simultaneously working on Texas. Um, and so we're almost through all of the legal compliance things to get through Texas. We're going to be focused on Austin and San Antonio markets first and then kind of grow from there uh, in Texas. Okay, so Arizona, that big Phoenix, greater Phoenix area. Yep. Uh, Texas, the, the main areas it looks like. And then yep. what would be like- Col Colorado, uh, Denver, Colorado Springs area. And then, yep, go ahead. Are you focusing mainly where the military uh, groups are? Is that what you're doing first? Yeah. So the kind of the, the value we find and, and how do we identify the properties or the locations rather where this makes the most sense. And really what it comes down to is where do the concentrations of assumable mortgages live or reside across the nation? And we really find the value that we can bring to agents who want to market this and also consumers who are really interested in buying a home with a assumed mortgage is concentrations around you know, military bases or major pop population centers where FHA loans typically exist. So FHA and VA and USDA are all assumable, um, but really the constant population centers where the vast majority of, of uh, assumable mortgages reside um, really are around kind of military bases installations. So we are focusing on some of those major cities where these bases exist. And, um, and that just tends to be really co-located where a lot of these major population centers are. 
Um, Vegas is another area we're looking into um, as well. And then I can also say um, Georgia and North Carolina are uh, two of the other major markets that we're looking to get into, as well as expansion in California, uh, sorry, expansion in Florida. Right now we cover the broad central corridor of Florida. Um, in fact, I can show you on our, on our uh, page here. Um, yeah. And we can just quickly talk about this and we're gonna, we wanna expand into the Panhandle and then also down into the uh, uh, Fort Lauderdale area in, into the uh, Miami Dade. So we cover really all, all through Orlando, uh, Tampa, Clearwater, down to Sarasota, et cetera, all the way out to Volusia County, Daytona Beach. Um, so we really wanna get up into the Panhandle area, into Jacksonville, and then down yeah. into like the Fort Lauderdale, Miami area. We're gonna work on that in the next uh, one, what do you say next three months or so. What do you have in California since you're there? Yep, here we go. So here's our California map. Oh, wow, dude. That's pretty big. Yep, yep. This is where we're going to go live this week. Awesome. Cool. Yep. Well, I'm excited. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah. Any other questions? I know we're getting short on time. Tristan, is anything else we want to cover? What do you think? We probably missed a, a few. Uh, Bethany, anything I missed that you might want to jump in on or you're good? Uh, I, I hope I answered everyone's questions. A lot of um, great questions about when we're coming to various areas. I do encourage you guys to uh, sign up the wait list uh, because that also tells us where demand is. Obviously, we look at Point. concentrations of loans, but if there's enough people saying we really need this in our market, you know, as far as agents, we'll, we will rack and stack you guys uh, sooner. Um, and if you guys do have any other questions that we didn't answer here today, you're welcome to reach out to us. Uh, contact information is on the website and we welcome any feedback and questions to the community. Yep, assumeless.com slash waitlist. And then you can, if we're not currently serving your market, that's the place to go. And of course, if you um, want to take advantage of our exclusive discount for LabCode agents uh, members, we offer a 15% off perpetual uh, discount off our subscription uh, just by filling out this form and you'll receive that via email immediately and you can sign up and take advantage of that exclusive to LabCode agents. It's the only discount we offer above the 10% level, even it's higher than our military discount, which pains me to say, but I want, wow, to, do dude. Special. I want to do something special for our lab code agent partners. That's because we know Bethany. Bethany's like, my that's team. right. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Thanks. This is great. I love this so much. So I'm, I'm, I'll reach out to the San Diego MLS. I'll text you guys and, and then we'll go from there. This was awesome. Thank you, Thank you guys. That's awesome. Thank you, Thank Tristan. You, Tristan. We appreciate it. Thank you, everyone.